People of St. Martin, I come to you this evening as Prime Minister and Chair of the EOC in an update for today, March 31st, 2020. After the activation of the Emergency Operations Center, EOC, during the first week of March 2020, the government of St. Martin officially requested assistance from our kingdom partner, the Netherlands. At this time, St. Martin had zero COVID-19 cases and our French counterparts had just already identified the first two cases themselves. As a result, the government began to accelerate all preparations, including synchronizing plans with our French counterparts in order to avoid a COVID-19 outbreak on the island. From the start of her tenure, our epidemiologist and head of collective prevention services, Ava Lista de Weaver, has dealt with every case encountered since February 5th, 2020, as well as collaborating and cooperating with her French counterpart. St. Martin had explored all viable options since the onset of this crisis and has assessed our needs in order to make the necessary request for assistance with the countries and organizations that we have a working relationship with. The government of St. Martin requested four types of assistance, medical supplies, personnel, ventilators, as well as military assistance. The communication that we received pertaining to our request is that it is being handled and assistance will be provided. In addition, noting the economic fallout that we expect, a request was made for liquidity support to the Netherlands in order to ensure our survival during this crisis. People of St. Martin, this is the reality. We are already one month into our fight against COVID-19 locally and we can now say, as of today, that we have 16 confirmed cases. Yes, of the 19 pending cases that we had yesterday, 10 of them have been confirmed, bringing our numbers officially to 16. I have been informed that also one person who was a suspected case in isolation at home has passed away today. Thus recording one death. The details of the recently confirmed cases, as well as that of the deceased person, are not yet known, and at present, I will not be able to give any more information until that is known. What I can say, however, is that uh, we now have quarantined and being monitored 288 persons. That has gone down as daily persons are reaching their 14-day quarantine and are released. If they develop symptoms, then they go to the isolation cases, and our isolation cases are now at 103. In total, we have tested 58 persons, and with 16 positive and 36 negative. Six tests are still pending. I also do not have the details as to whether those who have, have tested positive form part of the six uh, persons that have been admitted to St. Martin Medical Center over the past three to four days. More details on this will be brought to you tomorrow during our press briefing. And I wish the families of those persons suffering with the virus, as well as the deceased, much strength in moving forward. I would also like to update to the general public of St. Martin that our reality is that we only have, as I have said from the beginning, two ventilators at St. Martin Medical Center. And we are currently, these are currently occupied by non-COVID patients. The entire intensive care unit containing three beds are now occupied with non-COVID patients. The hospital has expanded its capacity because initially they only had six. With three being occupied, they have made six new spaces and all those are now uh, at capacity with patients that either suspected or confirmed, I'll be able to clarify that in the morning. And while we continue to work with the St. Martin Medical Center to secure more spaces for isolation units of COVID patients who need the hospitalization and expect that we will be able to handle more patients as soon as they are finalized with the promised assistance that is also expected, we must face what our reality is today. In this morning's discussion with the ministerial consultations on health and COVID-19 response within the kingdom, 
it was concluded that the Netherlands is able to provide 42 intensive care beds for the Caribbean. This includes also personnel and equipment. However, at the end of this meeting, no consensus could be reached as to how they would be divided across the islands and country, countries. That includes the best islands and Aruba, Curacao, and St. Martin. After much discussion, and I must say with much um, agreement from our partners in Curacao as well as St. Eustatius, St. Martin was able to secure six ice, uh, intensive care beds plus the necessary support, including ventilators, equipment, and personnel. Of course, the others at St. Martin believe that we require much more, and that is still under discussion, and we will hear in the course of the week what will be decided as it pertains to that. At least six are confirmed, and we expect that by the mid-April, these will be delivered or expected to be delivered here in St. Martin, understanding that that is two weeks away. It was clear that with the solidarity between the countries of the kingdom and the islands still stand, we agree that we will assist each other in times of need as long as our own situation is not critical. Right now, the situation on St. Martin is critical where capacity is concerned, as we have warned over the past month. We know that even with six additional IC beds, that with, this will not be sufficient Seeing that, today, we have 16 positive cases. What I can say, though, is that our first six cases are all now back at home, even those that were hospitalized and expected to recover. Despite the difficulties that we are currently experiencing, securing additional support within the kingdom, we have continued to upscale our capacities by setting up the pavilion to hold at least 10 to 20 persons who are COVID-19 confirmed and suspect that they are in need of medium temporary care. We expect that during this week, we will be able to finalize that. It must be stated that the proposal of the additional six bed will also include servicing Saba and St. Eustatius. St. Martin already serves as an overflow for the regular patients from Saba and St. Eustatius. And with our limited capacity now at maximum, if there is a situation on St. Eustatius right now, while completely willing, we simply would not have the capacity to be able to assist. That is simply our reality. I knew and I believe that it would have been, sorry, I believe that it should be made clear to the general public of St. Martin that we are in a Dutch kingdom. We cannot go and gather funds from other places without the permission of the Dutch. From any other location that we ask permission, the Dutch would be the conduit to permit such. Even for loans, we would require the, the permission of the CFT as well as the Kingdom Council of Ministers. This is our situation. The Netherlands has made it noted in no uncertain terms that they are also currently in a crisis and that all of us collectively and individually which basically says that we have to somehow make do with what we have. We must make the best of this situation, and we will, because we are a resilient people. We are being proactive, but even in being proactive, we have had delays in terms of being able to get what we need to St. Martin in time and in advance of an outbreak which we are now experiencing. Included in this request is the one for military assistance, which was made some 11 days ago, and up until today, March 31st, no answer has been received. This is still being discussed, and we look forward to a response. As such, I must inform the people of St. Martin that even with the announcements made last night of the measures to go into place today, even more stringent measures are needed in order to protect you, the people of St. Martin. As of Sunday midnight, as I stated before, what the government of St. Martin has instituted thus far is a curfew with limited movement and no movement in the evening. The limited movement is from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Let me remind you, limited movement is from 6 a.m. 
to 8 p.m. From 8 p.m. to 6 a.m., there should be no movement. Unless, of course, it's an emergency or work-related. This curfew only allows for essential movement during the daytime with a disaster pass, a professional travel proof, or a personal travel waiver. These documents I have explained in my presentation of yesterday. And they are available on our website for download as well as at key locations around the island. You are also allowed, if you do not have access to a printer, to handwrite the reasons for you being on the road should that be necessary and you are stopped by the police. You must fill out or write and carry with you this waiver at all times when on the public roads, whether for planned or for emergencies. You are encouraged to comply with these measures and remain at home as much as possible unless movement on the public roads cannot be avoided. As such, I would like to at this time reiterate the business closures that have been addressed on Monday's address as well as emphasize the changes necessary as a result of the continued expected growth in positive cases, especially among our isolated cases. The Ministry of TIAT hereby informs that based on the decisions of the Emergency Operations Center, EOC, that the following businesses are the only ones allowed to be opened, and this will be printed in the National Gazette. During the regular opening hours from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., grocery stores and supermarkets, as well as bakeries, are allowed to operate. Pharmacies are allowed. Gas stations that, and locations selling cooking gas are also allowed, as well as banks, medical and emergency services, and due to the fact that we are heavily dependent on our electronics at the moment, electronic stores and repair services. No government um, organizations or um, GEBE, TELEM, UTS, as I mentioned last evening, will be open to the public. So the public are allowed to be on the open roads only to visit the grocery stores and supermarkets, pharmacies, gas station and cooking gas, banks, medical and emergency services. That includes visiting the doctor, the pharmacy, and electronic stores and repair services. Businesses that are not allowed to be open to the public, but are allowed to have a special arrangement due to the services they provide to, especially emergency services, our restaurants, especially government construction projects, hardware stores to be able to supply materials to such projects, and maintenance and repair of emergency vehicles. Let me reiterate, the general public may not go to restaurants or order food in. The general contractors are not allowed to carry out construction projects. Only government projects are allowed to be continued as we are doing key services where it contains, pertains to home repair as well as the pavilions and repair to the police station roof. Hardware stores that service these projects are allowed to be open to service only them. Maintenance and repair of emergency vehicles that includes police, fire, ambulance, etc., are allowed as well as the repairs to the open road by the Ministry of Rummy. These measures will go into effect as of tomorrow, as of tomorrow, with the only exception being restaurants, as we understand that preparations are already made. So the results for the restaurants will go into place as of midnight tomorrow night. But as I explained yesterday in my briefing on Monday, all other restrictions go into effect as of tomorrow, April 1st. I re reiterate, the general public will not be able to make use of government services tomorrow, nor of GEBE, TELEM, UTS. These stricter 
measures are to ensure that there are less people moving about the road for the next couple of days as we continue to assess the situation of the growing number of cases and do our very best to contain it. If we find that within the next few days, our general public is not able to adhere to these measures which are being put in place to protect them, then of course we are left with no other choice but to do a complete and total shutdown. I would like to reiterate that there is no shortage of food on the island. We are making efforts to continue to ensure that the public can take care and we can take care of you. We must, however, be very conscious that we are not just planning for today, but for the coming months. Countries all around the world with more capacity than we have are currently challenged with capacity to deal with the COVID-19 outbreaks, and we as a people are forced to adjust, change our behaviors, and be patient. We need your patience, your compliance, because without knowing our real numbers, we cannot help you. Continue to call 914 and adhere to the orders of our police force. Joining me this evening is our Minister of Justice, Ms. Anna Richardson, who will also add some words to this address. Law enforcement is here to support and enforce the decisions of the EOC as they continue to assess and reassess COVID-19 developments with the main goal of protecting the population by limiting movement. There are movement conditions in place that require all persons utilizing the public roads to be in possession of a valid form of identification, provide a letter of either professional travel proof, personal travel waiver, certificate of exemption, or a disaster pass. Persons found on the roads the public streets during the hours of 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. risk being arrested. Many of our residents appear to still not be taking this pandemic as serious as needed and as such are maintaining close proximity socializing and unnecessary presence on the public roads. We strongly advise against this and are asking residents to remain at home as much as possible. As Minister of Justice, I take this opportunity to say thank you to Chief Carl John and the entire front line of the justice chain along with all medical and care staff that are working tirelessly in service to the population of St. Martin. With that said, I'm asking the public of St. Martin to take all measures of precaution with healthy hygienic practices, consuming supplements to build and maintain a healthy immune system and to please adhere to the regulations being implemented by the EOC. Thank you. Thank you, Minister of Justice, for adding your words of encouragement to the people of St. Martin. I would like to reiterate that on Monday, I read the entire regulation as to what was allowed and just now reiterated that some of the changes we made have been adjusted. I neglected to mention some of them, and I think this will put confusion in the minds of the people of St. Martin. So I will repeat that the public, the general public, is only allowed to go to the grocery or supermarkets, pharmacies, gas station, cooking gas, banks, for medical and emergency services, and to the electronic stores and repair services. Shipping and cargo companies will continue to operate as that is key to being able to provide food to our island. Funeral services and cleaning and garbage collection, of course, will continue, as well as media outlets and public transportation. Those hotels that are still in service will continue to operate to serve their guests only with takeout and delivery services, as well as those yachting agents still serving their vessels. The food suppliers that supply to uh, restaurants and supermarkets will continue to be able to supply, as well as bakeries. As I mentioned before, only government services and emerge, government construction and emergency services will be made, able to make use of construction, hardware stores, maintenance, and repair. And as of tomorrow evening, only 
restaurants will be available to those emergency services. So tomorrow is the last day for the time being that restaurants will be open to the public. That is one of the newer measures that I'm giving the restaurants one more day to be able to get rid of what they have prepared already this evening, seeing that the announcement is being made quite late. I do apologize for that, as just as we were going online, that the emergency um, information related to COVID patients was brought in and had to be added to the announcement. I will continue to update you on a daily basis, and tomorrow during the press briefing, you will be updated once more. As government, we would like to ensure that you as a family and person, people of St. Martin are protected. But each and every individual has a role to play. Ensure that you have activities that you can take part with your family in your home. This is a good time to reflect. This is an excellent time to pray. As I conclude, what I ask is simple. Save a life by staying at home. Stay at home because you matter. We are resilient and hopeful people, and we have faith that we will get through this period. But our practices, our behaviors are necessary to curb the spread. The EOC and ESF coordinators are all working together with you, with our Council of Ministers, in the best interest of you and our families. Follow our official information on our government website and our official pages. I ask you to stay vigilant, to stay informed, and I implore all employees and employers who are non-essential to stay at home. Business owners that are forcing workers to come to work when it is not necessary does not help the situation. All the work that can be executed from home should be done so, and in the next few days, curtail all non-essential activity. This is being done to protect you. This is being done to protect the entire island. Our numbers are, are growing, and that was expected. But we do not expect to continue to grow at infinitum. Please be careful. Stay inside. Stay at home unless for essential business. And if you have essential business, do ensure that you have the proper waiver and professional proof to be able to be on the roads. Our police officers will be checking and they will be reinforcing this measure. God bless you, St. Martin. God bless all her people as we work together, government, community, and each and every St. Martiner to keep St. Martin safe.